about today is that we've got so many different people uh, from different backgrounds, different interests, and so actually it's a, it's a networking event as well, and hopefully we'll get some connections. We're based down in, 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 in London, but um, Lord has been working with us up in Birmingham and we've got a great crowd, crowd here over the last two weeks. Um, this project actually funded by the Technology Strategy Board. So this is a slightly different funding stream to perhaps those, those funds normally associated with the built environment. This is for technology companies, uh, Slider Studios is one of those, Sticky World is one of those, to do a feasibility study to develop a service for public sector. And we, about, I think six months ago, we, we applied to the Technology Strategy Board and said, you know what, there's this thing called neighborhood planning coming, the locals and build, and we think there may be a need for innovation because the public sector's being cut and planning's being turned on its head, and maybe we could actually work uh, towards developing a service that public sector might buy into and maybe communities might benefit from. So we're actually, the, these workshops are actually part of our feasibility study. But we did think that we should actually get a whole range of stakeholders together, as we've done today, to talk about the web and neighbourhood planning and really unpick the process. Now we're not experts in neighbourhood planning process, I don't think anyone is yet, not even the DCLG, I don't get myself into trouble saying that. But it is obviously a bill that's going through Parliament right now. In fact, can we just have a show of hands? Who's familiar with this, the process and the stages of the process? Just in, any kind of, okay, who's not? Okay, so there's quite a few people here where we need to actually explain our understanding of what is going to be made uh, possible. And I think the, the purpose of the workshop is also for people here who've got some knowledge to share that with the, with the table. Well, what we're doing today is really dissecting a process and looking for opportunities to use tools that already exist and maybe invent some new ones. And we're doing this project in public, we're sharing all our results on the web, and we hope as a, as a result of our feasibility project that not only we will have some kind of idea of what we might go back to the Technology Strategy Board to uh, promote and say could we actually get some more development money, but actually everybody might find some new ideas and there's people already in this room who are working with the web um, and doing some great stuff. So. Uh, if we can raise the general awareness of its potential for something which is actually traditionally and by, by its very nature uh, a very local face-to-face -face activity. Um, we're, not, we're not actually proposing uh, that that changes, but that there are ways to augment the process and to extend the, uh, the, the dialogue and transparency. Anyway, so we're part of a bigger project uh, which is between Slide Studios. So Slide Studio is actually an architectural practice. Um, I set that up about six years ago. And we employ architects, software engineers, web designers. Um, we're really interested in design process and, and democratizing design. In fact, we, we say we make democratic design tools. We've done a range of those, including some in Birmingham. Our best tool to date is called Sticky World, and we span that out as a separate web company a year ago. Sorry, the slide's not very clear. But Sticky World is a web platform for presentation, dialogue, and decisions. And we have used it with um, local authorities in what I'd call traditional consultation. In, in, in other words, architects presenting drawings and uh, the community feeding back. And that's now with Westminster City Council. And we can show you that at the end of today for those, those who are interested. Um, but it's a generic tool. We've said, well, we could actually tweak it and extend its purpose to work for neighborhood planning and integrate with other tools that are already out there. So today what we're going to be doing is talking about a process, which some people find quite easy, some people struggle with it. We're going to try and break it down in a very simple way, but we've included our, our map, um, it, which you can take away. Um, you'll also be able to comment on that um, online. This is a map that we've been talking to DCLG about, and they are quite desperate for a process map because currently their neighborhood planning process is just a list of bullet points. And we think there's a few more uh, nuances that um, could be explained to help people navigate that process. And today really is about looking for those opportunities uh, within the process where web tools may help. We've broken it down into five simple stages. You'll see that on the, on the wall. 
um, basically starting up, preparing plans, examining plans that have been made, a referendum, assuming that all the, all the boxes are ticked and it can go to referendum, and then adoption and action. So these are the five stages that we see on the wall. And actually, maybe I'll just give you just as a little um, prep. Sorry, I need to borrow a plan. If you turn to the inside of your... I'll explain the, the, the process map that we've made. It's two colours, main colours. Um, the dark brown is an active lead. These are, these are the groups that are doing stuff. And you'll notice that you, you're sitting on tables, which are either called... Uh, We've got supporters over there, which represent primarily local authorities. There are obviously other bodies that are public sector funded and supporters, but we drew that distinction really from the act, really from the act. Uh, the, 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 the localism bill describes uh, a duty to support for the local authorities, and they are supporting the communities, who we call leaders, because it's, it's a community-led process, and leaders will also need particular help and tools to carry out their leadership role. And then we have advisors over here, which is pretty much everybody else. Do we, have, we don't have any builders in the, in the audience, do we? So we've got, we've got consultants, architects, enabling uh, professionals such as yourself. Okay, so that, those are our distinctions. As Lorna said, if you want to change, do so. There's also going to be an opportunity in this workshop where you will be asked to change and we'll mix up the tables anyway. So this process is really about how communities start to lead and the local authorities in their duties to support have certain uh, operations to do such as uh, the um, commissioning, the, uh, the, the inspection of the plans and ultimately running referendums. And our plan here starts to uh, show how we understand this to be. We're sending this back to DCLG. Hopefully they'll uh, pay us a bit of money to draw it up and correct it as they want to see it. But uh, hopefully this becomes a little bit more uh, detailed than how we're dealing with it in, 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 in the workshop. But you'll also see on your table there's some big arrows, which I imagine will explain in more detail. These are arrows which re relate to these different stages. And really what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the sticky notes to share our insights on this process. So, again, the rules of this workshop are going to explain my origin. It's all about, that's all we're doing today. Uh, we're looking for a very rounded view between the different parties. Um, so, you can have your own ideas. In fact, many of you, we're all in communities, so if you actually have a community that you think about yourself, um, where you live, that's also relevant. Um, and uh, there isn't anything that you can write down on a sticky note which can be wrong. It should be fun. It goes very quickly. Standing my mentee is going to keep time, which is your nice task for today, because we will have to move on swiftly to different stages. And we are going to share the results. Uh, well, we've already got some stuff up on youcanplan.stickyworld.com. And... Lorne is also the point of contact, and I'm going to pass you over now to uh, Imogen, who's going to talk us through the agenda for today. Right. Um, sorry, so yeah, can I just, sorry Imogen, no, is there any questions on anything I've said? So I'm happy, this is a research project, and we're, going to, we're basically going to explore the process of planning. Okay, thank you. Um, so, yeah, if you turn on the back of your um, slide, you've got the agenda, and you see that there's... Really, there's three uh, sessions in the workshop. So first of all, you're going to be staying in your groups, so um, uh, leaders, advisors, or supporters. And uh, between you, you're going to be coming up with um, uh, looking at the kind of positives and negatives of each part of the process. Um, I'll explain that in more detail in a moment. And then in the exploring session, um, we're going to be looking at going to mix all the groups up and then have a kind of try and build a big resource pool of all the resources uh, projects that we know of that are kind of starting to implement web tools um, and then we're kind of going to look at trying to address some of the issues and potential pitfalls um, in the neighbourhood planning process and then we're going to round up with um, some sort of debate discussion at the end. 
Um, so, for the first task then, um, you'll all see on your table you've got these arrows in front of you. So, um, they each are relevant to parts of the process. So this is start up, so you see they kind of fit up on the posters on the wall. Um, and the very first task is um, to go through, and starting off positive, you can get sceptical later about it, um, using the green sticky notes, writing down possible opportunities for, so you group, your group as community leaders, possible opportunities during the start-up stage. Um, and then going through each of the arrows, so spread them out on your table, sort of read what they are and discuss them. Uh, and then start writing down green sticky notes and sticking them up on the arrows. Um, should, can, I, anyway, can I just add, this is a, what we're doing here is a business, it's called a game storming exercise. And this particular one is called pre-mortem, which is basically, it's, it's kind of like post-mortem, only it hasn't died yet. So the idea is, and lots of businesses do this, the idea is that, that it is going to die. <laughs> if, if neighbourhood planning as a process is going to fail or die, where is it going to fail and what can we do to stop it? So businesses do this type of thing to kind of de-risk the, the in, introduction of new processes and innovations. So we're doing a pre-mortem on neighbourhood planning, which is why we're going to start with uh, all your aspirations about why it's a great thing and, why, and you have to write down in each of the stages what's great about neighbourhood planning, what you're hoping for, and then you can use the orange stickies to say, oh, what's going to go wrong? And it's quite interesting to see in the groups whether we get more greens than oranges. But um, this will help us actually then understand where is it that we can bring existing tools to bear, which are web tools, internet tools, or physical, physical tools that you might deploy with, with, with communities. And then also, if there are some missing uh, a need for new tools, we can actually invent those too. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, the second part is with the orange sticky notes, looking at the possible pitfalls of it. And then at the end of the, this first session, we're going to be putting all our arrows up on our relevant posters, and then trying to boil down with, I think we've got some little uh, circle stickers to try and discuss between yourselves what are the really key points that you think need addressing uh, in the neighbourhood plan process. So, so is this the best way for them to put the arrows on the table? Yeah. yeah. If everyone just actually takes those brown arrows and spreads them out. Uh, so I might need to make some room. And you all have facilitators with you on the table, so if any questions... Yeah, well, I'm going to have a go with this. Thank you.